here's the magic. One, two, bam. The deli sandwich that trumps all deli sandwiches is called a muffaletta. And this goes back many, many, many years, and I decided that because it's picnic season, this would be a great thing to sort of bring to the forefront for you to enjoy. Super easy, but lots of ingredients to sort of mix together. And then you just need a, it to be weighed down. So I'm gonna start with the filling which is going to be encased in bread. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing is doing a relish in the bottom, all the meats and cheeses sort of stacked in the middle and then a relish on the top and then weighting it down. Now remember, we're going old school, old school, not the new wave everything. So we're using pimento stuffed olive, chopped parsley. Greek olives sliced, and these are not the ones in the can that are California olives with the hole in the middle. These are actually pitted Greek olives. Capers that have been drained. We don't want the brine, we just want the actual caper. Roasted red pepper. I'm using the jarred variety, way easier, way quicker. Chopped sun-dried tomatoes. Celery seed, dried basil, and dried oregano. And I know right now you're thinking, what? basil and oregano, why wouldn't we use fresh? And when you use fresh herbs, when they are not eaten within the hour or two, they go brown, they go soggy, and they will not look nice in the sandwich. Two garlic cloves. Anchovy. I've drained them, chopped them. We're going to mince them up. If you really have a, a hate on for anchovies, leave them out. Whenever I do a, a sauce, a bolognese sauce or a tomato sauce or anything, when I'm sauteing the onions, I will always add one or two anchovies. And when you do it that way, it just dissolves in the onion mixture and then you don't even know it's there, but you know something tastes good. So for all you haters out there of anchovy, that's the way to do it. Finally, balsamic vinegar. So I'm pouring in olive oil. And we're sort of got a big old relish here. Agave or honey is going in here, two tablespoons. And we're gonna let that just percolate on the side. A nice hearty loaf of bread. Day old is preferable. The relish is gonna soak into the bread. So you're gonna take this and cut it in half. We're gonna pull the bread out, leaving about a half an inch around the edges. Again on the bottom, and pull that out. So I'm using soppressetta, Genoa salami, roasted turkey breast, any mixture you like. You can use brisola, which is an air-dried Swiss beef, you can use prosciutto, you can use anything that suits your fancy. Cheeses, I've got Swiss and provolone. I wanna get moving on this, so what we're gonna do is we're going to drain off the excess oil. Here we go. Not, you're not gonna get a lot draining off, but you will get some. We're just gonna push down on this to get rid of some of that, because all that will make the bread a little bit soggy and we don't want that. We're gonna take a brush and we're gonna use this good flavor and we're just gonna brush the sides of the bread casing like so. Don't go overboard because the relish will provide a lot of moisture. Both sides, like so. Then we're gonna take half of the relish, start with the bottom, and we're going to fill this cavity. Then we're going to start with layering the meats and cheeses over top. Like I said, anything you want. The classic is mortadella because it's very Italian. We're gonna use the honey roasted turkey. I've got all of these different ones. Whatever you think you like. Then we could do a little bit of Swiss here. Stack that in. Then I'll do a little bit of soppressetta. Provolone. Tuck those edges in. Genoa. 
I would take this on a picnic. I think it's the perfect, has everything. You don't have to open up anything. There's a great big beautiful wedge of everything that you need in a deli sandwich. And then we're gonna go back in with Swiss and we're pushing it so that it really packs in a little bit more of this. And we'll finish off with the provolone. Then we're gonna fill the top cavity with the remaining relish. Push that down like so. Smells very good. You can smell all the combinations of all these beautiful cured olives, sun-dried peppers. And here's the magic. One, two, bam. Push down. We've got some plastic wrap. Pull it tight, really, really, really tight. You can see there's a little bit of leakage in the bottom from the dressing coming out, but that's okay. And then another strip for this side. Make sure that it's really encased, the whole thing. What we're going to do is weight it down. So we can put it in a bowl and weight it down. I had a little pot, you'll see the one that I've done next, but I used just a bookend, whatever you have that's really heavy uh, so that it will condense it. You want it pressed. This is just a bookend that I just had and that's what I did. And it sat overnight in the fridge, obviously because of the meats, the cheeses. It's not something that you're gonna weight down at room temperature. So this is gonna weight it down for overnight take it out of the fridge. This just happened to be cool that it fit into this little pot and I weighted it down. So I'm just, I, and I've taken the plastic wrap off already. Okay, this is the, yes! So, then with a very sharp knife, we're gonna cut it into half. Half again. Now these are big portions, so don't, this is not a Dag, this is a Dagwood sandwich of a different variety. And then, just to hold all of that goodness together, every sandwich lover in your world will thank you for this. And you can see by pressing it how the, the meats and cheeses are all completely just squished and stacked and you've got the relish on both ends. So it's, that's the important part. That's the secret of this uh, sandwich is that you press it down. On your next picnic, volunteer for the sandwich detail. Don't tell them what you're doing. Surprise them, bring this out and everybody will go, what? So welcome back to the 50s you have a very classic muffaletta sandwich. Can't go wrong.